Assalamu alaikum. In the last video, we talked about the angular momentum operators and we check whether they are Hermitian or not. And we also talk uh, about the commutation relation between these operators. Today, we'll talk uh, about the eigenvalues and eigenfunctions of these angular momentum operators. So we define the angular momentum operators like this way. And this is X component of the angular momentum operator is equal to Y hat PZ minus Z PY. Uh, this is Y component of the position operator and this is Z component of the momentum operator. Likewise, this is Z component of position operator and this is Y component of the momentum operator. And we know that whenever the X component or the position operator acts on a function, it is just to multiply the X with the function and the momentum operator, say PX is equal minus I A squared D by DX. So uh, replacing these operators with this uh, notation or with the differential operator and uh, just the function for X, Y, Z, uh, we have the, uh, these equations in terms of the differential operator. Then we talked about the uh, commutation relation between these op operators. So we have shown that the X component, if we take the commutation of X component of the momentum operator with the Y component, this, they do not commute. And this gives us a LZ, that's the Z component of the momentum operator, sorry, angular momentum operator. Likewise, if we take Ly, Lz, it gives us Lx. This is easy to remember if we uh, keep in mind the circle. So if we take Lx, this is Lx, this is Ly, and this is Lz. So if we take any two components, the commutation iteration between them will be the third one, but we have to rotate it like the anti-clockwise way. So if we take LX, LY, the third one, we have just to multiply the result with IA squared. If we take LY and LZ, then we have the third one, LX. So this is what we have. Similarly, this one. From here, we said that they do not commute. That is, we cannot measure them simultaneously. So for a, any system, if we measure the X component of the angular momentum, uh, then we won't be able to say anything about the Y component and the Z component. That is, we won't be able to measure them. So, but we wanted to find a operator that commutes with all these three components of the angular momentum. And we defined that L squared is the square of the angular momentum operator, which we have shown that the commutes with all three of them. We also said that there are spin angular momentum, though we cannot derive them from uh, the position and momentum operator, the way we derive these angular momentum operators, but they follow the exactly same relation, that is the same algebra. Uh, so whenever you take the uh, commutation of these two components, uh, X and Y component of the spin angular momentum, you will have I A squared, uh, the Z component of the spin angular momentum. Likewise for the other two. Okay, today we want to uh, calculate or talk about the eigenvalues and the eigenfunctions for these angular momentum operators. That is the orbital angular momentum operators. We won't talk about the spin angular momentum. So uh, we uh, write them in spher spherical pol polar coordinates. So if we have the uh, X, Y, Z, which represents the Cartesian uh, coordinate. Uh, we will write the spherical polar coordinates like R, theta, and phi, and they are related with these three equations. Actually, these six because you can write this way or the, or the other way. Now, here the one thing this this uh, phi that doesn't depend on theta. Actually, it's independent of theta because whenever you rotate phi. You, you have the theta fixed constant. That is, uh, say this is the Z component and uh, this is phi. So you can rotate the vector around the Z components and it doesn't depend on theta. So we'll start with uh, this one to show uh, to actually to 
express the angular momentum operators in the spherical polar coordinates. Now, for that, to start with that, we just remind you that the z component of the angular momentum operator can be written like this way. Here you can see x dy, d by dy minus y d by dx. This is the partial derivatives. So if we take the partial derivative of uh, this angle phi, we have to take the derivatives uh, with respect, uh, we have to take the uh, derivatives of x, y, and z with respect to phi also. If you want to uh, express it, it's derivative. Then, so we have like uh, dx by d phi multiplied with d by dx. Similarly, dy by d phi, d by dy, and the for the z, dz by d phi, d by dz. Now, we want to uh, actually evaluate this. So dx by uh, d phi. So if you uh, take the derivative from here, uh, right, dx by d phi, we have uh, on r sine theta minus sine phi. Okay, similarly, you can uh, derive uh, this also. And uh, the z, uh, z doesn't depend on phi. So whenever you take the derivative, that is equal to the uh, zero. And if you see this one, r sine theta sine phi, that is equal to y. So if you take this one, dy by d phi, we have uh, r sine theta cos phi. This is nothing but equal to x. So we see that whenever we take the derivative of x with respect to phi, we have minus y, sorry, this is minus y because we have minus here at the beginning. And whenever we take the derivative of y with respect to phi, we have x. So we place them, we write them, we replace this as a minus y and replace this as x and we have this one. But we remember that Lz equals like this x d by dy minus y d by dz multiplied with minus i a squared. So if we divide Lz with minus i a squared, then we have only this term. Therefore, we define the Lz operator in terms of phi like this. So minus i a squared d by d phi. So we have the z component of the angular momentum operator this way. Now you can take the derivative of theta and do the other for the others also. You can show that the other two components are can, can be expressed like this. Uh, this will take a little bit math, but we are not going to here. But this is the result. So this is the x component, this is the y component, and this is the z component. Now this is the simplest one for the from here you can see the z component is the simplest one. Now uh, with a little bit more al algebra, we can show that the L square is like this way. Can be expressed with these expressions. So here you can see that the L square is independent of R. It only depends on uh, theta and the phi. That is the angle of rotations. It doesn't depend on the radial part. So therefore, we have uh, expressed the uh, angular momentum operators in terms of spherical polar coordinates. Now let's talk about the eigenvalues. So we assume that uh, the psi LM is an eigenvalue and uh, this uh, depends on theta on and phi only because we have shown here the Z component only depends, depends on phi and the L depends on theta and phi. Actually, none of them depends on R. So and we also have shown that Lz, sorry, if we take Lz, it's the same for uh, Lx and Ly, Lz also, uh, also, that they commute, that's the result is zero. That is, we can have a simultaneous eigenfunction for both L square and Lz. Therefore, we assume that the psi Lm is the simultaneous eigenfunction for both Lz and Ly. We are not defining it yet, but we are saying that this is an 
uh, eigenfunction. And we know that for angular momentum operator, it, it will have a unit of a scat. So we have the a scat here. And we assume that uh, whenever it operates on the function, it will give us a number. So this, the, this is a number, m is a number. And we are assuming this is real because we know that uh, the LZ is Hermitian. LZ is a Hermitian operator. So for any Hermitian operator, the eigenvalues are real and a scat is real. So we are saying that M is a real number. And this is true because uh, the unit of this is the same as the unit of this one. So the, this is angular momentum, but this is real as we know that LZ is Hermitian. For L square, we are saying that um, uh, this is also the A hat is square, sorry, A scat is square. That is the square of the uh, momentum, angular momentum. And we write it like L into L plus one. So if we say that uh, L is real, then most of the time this is positive only for the range uh, minus one to zero, this is uh, not positive, but otherwise this is positive. Now we want to show that whether L is square, the uh, what is called the eigenvalues of L is square will be real or not. So for that we write like this: we take this expectation value so for with the L is square. So this is L x square. We know that L is square is L x square plus L y square plus L z square. Sorry. So we write like that. Now we distribute this because we know that L x, L y, L z is uh, our Hermitian. So this is L x square means L x, L x. We can take one of them with this uh, uh, function or eigenfunction. Then we have this. Uh, now, if we know that if we take the inner product of two of, of a function with itself, because this is the same function, then the result is uh, zero or greater than zero. That is, is always positive. So this one is always positive. This one is always positive. This one is always positive. Therefore, the product, this is always positive. The L is square, sorry, L into L plus one should be always positive. So we defined here uh, uh, for L to be real, but we have to put another constraint for L, or we have to define in a such a way that this is this uh, the product, this number is always a positive number. We will do so. Before that, let's, uh, let, let us first uh, talk about the M, what will be the value of M, and uh, then we'll talk about the value of L. Okay, so we know this is the uh, Z component of the angular momentum operator. And uh, so for any function, if we take the psi LM, we'll have this way because the eigenvalues we have defined like HM psi L. So we replace here this term with the operator, the differential equation that is we defined here, this one. So then we have this equation. Now we simplify, we uh, get rid of a cut from both sides. We have this one. Now this is simple to say that the solution of this will be simple. It will be like something like that, exponential uh, I m phi. So this is all phi dependent. So we define this P is the theta dependent. This is another polynomial. This is actually the uh, associated Hermitian polynomial, Hermit polynomial. So we are not worried about this term at this moment. So this is what we get for this one. Now from here, uh, what we see that if we rotate, so say, assume this is Z, this is phi. Uh, if we rotate this uh, around the axis, after rotating uh, twice pi angle, there's 360 degree, it comes to the same place. That is uh, for this uh, e to the power i m phi, this should be true because if you rotate that uh, phi angle, the twice pi, then you should have the same function. From this, if we use this one here, we can say that e to the power i m phi plus two i is equal to e to the power i m phi. Therefore, e to the power i twice pi m equals one. Now, 
the, that are the left side, left hand side, to be one, M have to be always integer. M cannot be anything other than integer. We started saying that M is a real number. So, but now we conclude that M is a real number, but M is also an integer, real integer. So we say that M belongs to Z, or Z is uh, zero, plus minus one, plus minus two, any number, positive or negative, but they are integer. So we conclude from here that M is a integer. Now for L, the, uh, this is what can be shown with a little bit more mathematics, which we are not going to show. If you are interested, you can read in any book uh, that this product to be always positive, then L have to be 0, 1, 2, 3, something like that. This L have to be positive always because we see from here, from this range, uh, minus 1 to 0, the result is negative. Uh, it can be shown that the L should be po uh, positive and L have to be integer, positive integer. And also, it can also be shown that M actually is, is, uh, is in between minus L to L. That is for any L, M will have 2L plus 1 values. So for L equals uh, 0, M will have only 0. And the values of m will be zero for l equals one m the values of m will be minus one zero one like for two it will be uh, minus two minus one zero one two like this so uh, from here we say that the eigenvalues of l z and l square will be like this m and l into uh, l into l plus one such that L equals 0, 1, 2, 3, and M is actually minus L2 plus L, the integers. Okay, this, uh, the, now about the eigenfunctions, we are not going to show in the details calculation, but just to show you the result, the eigenfunction is expressed like this way. So we actually started with uh, shy, but this is, we didn't say whether this is normalized or not with the properly normalized psi is written as y, and this is called spherical harmonics. Here, that is what we have said, P, L, uh, M, cos theta is associated Legendre function. So uh, in these equations, M is get or equals zero, but for M less than zero, we have to uh, get like from this way, from this equation. As also we said that uh, y, the spherical harmonics are normalized, properly normalized. So if we integrate them about the solid angle, because this only depends on theta, no? It doesn't depend on the r. So if we uh, integrate about the solid angle, then if both the functions are same, then we will have one, otherwise it is zero. So they are orthonormal and they are normalized. So this is what we talk the eigenvalues for Z uh, component of angular momentum will be H cut M, where M is uh, integer. And for the L square, it will be L into L plus one into H cut, H cut square, and L equals zero, one, two, three. For any value of L, we will have two L plus one values of M that actually ranges from minus L to plus L. And the eigenfunctions, which are called spher spherical harmonics, and they are written by these equations. So here are some examples of the eigenfunction. This is in terms of theta and phi, spherical polar coordinate. And this is uh, in terms of x, y, z. So you can see for L equals zero, we have one only. For L equals one, we have two uh, spherical harmonics uh, with L equals one, sorry, three, one with M equals zero, and the other two with plus minus one. Similarly, for the Cartesian coordinates also. That's all for today. Thank you. That's all.